everyone so today we are studying pigments so let me show you what you're gonna learn so in our pigment life today um we are going to learn about tour so first we're gonna learn about what kind of tool and material it takes that here's pigment then we also learn about blending rules and these are the golden rules that you have to follow to be able to blend pigment very very well also we're gonna learn about a uh, brush stroke so this is gonna be part of your homework is the stroke pattern that is take to achieve flawless pigment then we're gonna go to brush maintenance meaning uh, how to clean your brush what soften do you to clean your brush then we're gonna go over mixing rules so we're gonna learn how to mix pigment together and how to mix gel together then we're gonna learn about what material is take to adhere pigment what material is take to block pigment and how to seal your pigment with top coat so let me go ahead and connect to my other page. Ready, Dustin? Mm -hmm. Okay. De novo. Okay. Yay! All right. We are in. Okay. All right, everyone. So let's get started. My first thing that I need to show you is tours. So with me, I have a pack of pigment that I already put out. I put it in the form tray like this. I use this forever, but I will show you the box. Okay, so this is the pigment box that I have, and this is your starter kit. This is the $24.99. This is all neon, and it has one white pigment. So all of these neon color, which is 11 colors, they can mix together to make other neon colors and this white pigment right here it can mix with other neon color to make pastel color so this is the 72 different color kit that you can make and then later on i have this and these are five different colors so these are primary and rare colors these are red black pigment indigo and burgundy and tan pigment which when you make it white it's make nude pigment so these are primary and these are stainless these are extremely potent and strong and these are for advanced so when you first started out you start out with this then later on when you like really into it and really good at it then you uh, can go ahead and collect different primary colors so besides the pigments one thing that you need to know is you don't want anything that have base in it base meaning it's kind of grainy though kind of pigment will be very light it's, you need some things that are like soap you need something that are very potent and buttery like so number one is a type of pigment that you use it needs to be an indian pigment because india have a lot of potent soil they have a lot of clay the natural element is very good for your pigment uh, versus if you choose from china or vietnam or laos those kind of pigments tend to be less quality so that is the type of pigment that you choose second is tours so i have my pigment base somewhere okay so this is our famous pigment base now when it comes to whatever you put on to do pigment, people usually mm, complain about, oh, my pigment doesn't turn out well, it's, uh, it's not blend well. Um, if 
any of that happen, first you need to check your pigment. Second, you need to check your polish. Now, pigment bay is simply just a white gel polish, but you see this of a very special white gel polish because of its inhibition layers. So gel have many, many different level of inhibition, stickiness, wetness. So you don't want something that when it dry, it's too wet because if it's wet, you put pigment on it, it's going to be muddy. It's not going to blend. Just like, uh, just like you try to brush makeup on a face that already have like conditioners and oil, and then you put your makeup on, it wouldn't be pretty. You need your face to be able to, to, to be dry, moist, but dry. That's, that's what it means. You don't want your face to be wet when you put makeup on. Same with pigment. You don't want your inhibition layer to be like super wet when you touch the, the the surface and you see it's really sticky in your finger you don't want that and you don't want no white meter because with nothing for it to stick on it's not going to stay on well it might it might the dry powder might be on but when you put top coat on it dis disappear so the inhibition layer is extremely important to deliver smooth flawless result so next is the type of brush that you use. Now, when you chew a pigment brush, number one is you don't want short bristle because short bristle like this, if it's really, really short, what happens is it's really stiff. So when you blend, you can have a lot of streak like chicken scratch. You don't want that. You want something with long bristle because it's bent. It absorbs impact. And that's what you're looking for. Plus, you don't want anything with edges. The head have to be flawless. It cannot have any edge. It has to be nice and fluffy, kind of like this big fluffy right here. This is perfect for it. Now, the dimension of your brush also important because you don't want something that are round. See, round like that, you have no direction. You have... It's too thick, it's too, too big and bulk. You want something that are flat like this. Because this right here, this is the direction you apply. Or you can turn over and apply in narrow space like this. So this is a perfect form for your pigment brush. You don't want something like this. It's very difficult. Which means you have to go directly down and brush. And you don't want that. You want it to be tilted. And it's difficult to tilt with a round brush than with a flat brush. A flat brush are very easy to tilt and brush. And that is a perfect brush angle, it's tilting. So you don't want something like this because it forces you to be right side up like this. You know, you cannot tilt very easy with a round brush. So number one is type of pigment. Number two is the foundation that you put on, which we have many, but this is a main one. And these are also an important element is a type of brush. Anytime that you do pigment and your pigment doesn't turn out well, assuming that you already know my technique, if not, you're about to find out. But when you try my technique and you achieve flawless um, amount of um, a, a flawless look of pigment, and then like two months later, you try again and it's all crappy, then you have to check. You have to check oh, well, I already choose the right pigment. I already have the correct bay, so my brush must be expired. You know, my brush must be changing shape. So any of that can be a big problem to your blending. So that's number one is tools. Number two is blending drawers. So I'm going to have with me a big piece of paper right here, and I'm going to blend a nails for you. So I'm going to take one empty nail and pigment base and I am going to paint over the entire surface. Uh, equally. Right now, this is very essential for our industry because pigment art is like makeup, which make it sort of limitless. When it comes to makeup, you know what makeup can do. So this right here, when you master pigment, it's going to be amazing for your ombre, 
it's gonna be amazing for whenever you want something to up blendy but you don't want to work with gel especially for like small narrow surface you need to understand pigment so you can utilize that effect okay so i'm curing this for 60 seconds and when you cure you cure an led or uv of course i don't know anyone use uv anymore because i have been using led for 10 years now a long long time and i love led because it's faster you need to check your wattage your wattage need to be above 60 watt um like i saw people using this kind of light before especially for beginner you need to aware that this a flash here is not appropriate for special effect now if you try it at home you might already take flash here and kill in different gel colors and it seems to dry and you put top coat on your key and it's dry no that it's not dry other way but with just coloring you might be able to get away with it but with special effect if you don't have appropriate uh, timing for it to cure then it's gonna not gonna give you the effect that you're looking for so let's blend okay so now i am gonna take out my pigments um let's do some things fun so uh let's do this this is pretty i like this let's do this okay so i am gonna take my pigment brush out and i am gonna mix a light purple so with this this kind of hot purples and i put some blue over it and the paper towels i'm using a viva and later on, I'm going to use Bounty, and I'm going to explain the difference between paper towel. But now, I'm going to start out with Viva first. Viva is a more expensive paper towel. I use it as a very beginning for its absorbing uh, ability right here. It's absorb everything, so it's make everything less dusty. But later, I will switch to Bounty, and I will explain why. I can mix a little white pigment in this to lighten this purple up. Okay, now after that, I'm going to blend everything thoroughly. Now, I want to let you know something. A lot of people attempt this before. They, they either put it in a paper towel or they dip it, the brush, into the bottle like this. And what they do is they immediately flash it on the nail and start blending. And what happened is this brush have a lot of pigment. It also have a lot of loose powders. And what happened is when they apply it on the nail surface, it's dusty. It shoot everywhere. It's become very messy. Um, let me cure this nail and I will show you what I meant by it for the cure just a little more okay let me cure these three now too okay so a lot of people do this they either dip it in here like this okay and they do let it just like just a little bit and they go directly on the nail like this do you see this first Pigment is caking on the nail. Second, look at all this dust. At this point, it's over because you're not going to be able to clean this. What happened is pigment laying on here, this is a surface that built especially pigment. So trying to dust it, look at all this. Look at all this yuckiness. It's over. At that point, you're done. You have to start over again. So the proper way after you smudge it on a paper towel and how and why you smudge it on the paper towel because in a place where you blend you mix in different colors you don't want just to dip this in and go you want a place that holding your pigment ba paper towel like this viva paper towel is perfect because it's whole pigment very well so i'm gonna mix a little bit here see how i smudge it in to this palette right here now, my brush is full, have full color on it. However, I know that there's excess dust. So what I do next is that I take this 
it's like a little jar and i knock off the dust okay and when i first started i don't have this jar so i do this on the edge of my table that's work too see that so now there's color all over your brush but there's no excess dirt and this is very important because that's gonna prevent you from making a uh, disasters out your pigment work so let's blend this okay, okay. so i'm gonna start blending okay and this is a type of blending from a incredibly light hand person so i'm light-handed if any of you are light-handed congratulations it's gonna be a little e easier okay but speaking from a standpoint of a heavy-handed person let me take out another nail and i will try to be very heavy-handed okay okay so i'm no longer tino i'm becky now and i never done pigment before ever in my life okay so tino have taught me uh rub it on my paper towel and now i rub this on okay like this and then tino tell me to take something like this and knock up the dust like this don't do it like that go crazy at it okay now i'm gonna be very heavy handed so i'm going in and i'm brushing it and it's still a little bit pretty but just pretend like i i have no blend at all like this like oh see this so i'm starting out okay and as far as no there's heaviness there's no perfection anywhere there's no perfection that's heaviness it's okay it is okay everybody have somewhere to start so what happened is you only worry about making this top part solid see this is two part one is completely solid and one down here is 50 50. okay so you worry about making your solid color first like this so becky gonna go very heavily on top okay and when becky satisfied with her solidity now it's time for the blend right so if you're a heavy-handed person you should know that your stroke is heavier so um instead of trying to be lighter in your hand you can try this you can take your brush that you're already working on and flick on the paper towel a couple of times what happened is you're still blending just not on now on the paper towel so the color in the brush get weaker as you're doing this on the paper towel so when you heavily dust it on the nail look it's getting softer right so that is a way to kill your heavy handedness is removing it from the paper towel but just only a few times because if you keep removing it then you're not gonna have anything on your nails so do just a couple of times first and see and if it's still heavy then do a few more times and then a few more times just slowly increase your stroke like that and it's already better for becky it's not flawless yet it's not like completely solid but for a beginner there is a lot of progress there is like a big accomplishment for beginners so a lot of people are intimidated especially when it comes to how to blend your pigment like this but you see it just like makeup it's about how you stroke it so i'm i am gonna show you how to stroke and and i am gonna stroke very slowly because this is me stroking fast and a lot of people see tino went in like this so when they have their pigment they do exactly the same thing at me they go in like this they go in like this and they start to go like this not starting out like that this is how you first start out you're taking a nail and you start to examine your stroke so when you start stroking and this is just a practice now this is what you need to do you need to make one specific stroke like this like that one stop analyzing it and then keep going another one 
just like that. So if your stroke starting out like this, like that, that is not a successful stroke. So when I'm, I'm done practicing, okay, and every one of my stroke is perfect like this, this is a perfect stroke, soft, nice and soft. So it start hard and it ends soft. You don't see any rich anywhere, any um, kind of mark anywhere. That is a successful stroke. So when I start to increase my speed and do multiple stroke like this, no that every single stroke that I did is perfect. Because most of you might think when I'm doing this, about 50% of the stroke is perfect and 50% of the stroke is, is, is not perfect. No, it's not true. Every stroke has to be perfect. But when you start out practicing, you don't do multi-stroke like that. You do one stroke at a time to examine your pattern. So the way you stroke in it let's pretend that this is a surface of the nail right mm. actually take this let's pretend that this is a surface of the nails okay the way i stroke is this i'm hovering on top of the surface of my nail i slightly go down and remember i'm tilting my brush not like this i don't do this okay i'm tilting my brush that's why it's important to have a semi flat fluffy brush and i'm going down slowly going down to the surface so i touch in surface i make contact i keep going i keep going and then i slowly slowly lift my brush so this is a motion that i go down run lift down run lift that is a smoke motion that are correct now a lot of people they're not slowing down the motion so they're not aware of them doing this they go down they run and they stop and then they go down they run and they stop you will never get a plan this way because you're not taking off you just do it like this down run and stop like this or like that you know that that is not a plan this is not a plan okay this is a plan where you lift just like that and when i do it on the nail not a lot of people see that that's why they see this perfection and they just don't know why they don't know why it's so flawless but when you zoom in to a close up okay you have to know that when you land and run, you have to take up and lift. You have to lift just like this. You're not doing this. You run and they stop. A lot of people do that. My student, I watch them many times. This is a stroke. Like this. Like this. They stroke like this. You see, they don't take off. Okay, you have to take up. You have to do this. This is me taking off. See that? you blend out more you blend it more so that is brush stroke part of your homework if you take out a nail just like me okay you take out a nail at home and remember you don't go in like me you go in one stroke at a time like this one and then you stop and then you put your glasses on and you see you see how perfect you are and then when you approve of your stroke you do another one Okay, and you don't have to do it fast. You can do it slow like this. Like that. You can do it very slow because that's how you practice. That's how you monitor your pattern and behavior because if not, you're not gonna be able to catch a mistake. So one at a time. Now, we've done tour, we've done blending drawer and you remember the blending rule when you watch back you have to remember knock up as it does that's rule number one rule number two is when you blend remove off the paper towel okay so i'm gonna do it one more time i'm gonna take this nail right here and i am gonna finish this colors this color pattern right here okay so I want to do pink next. My brush have colors. How I do it is I smudge it on a paper towel until the colors go away. OK. 
and we we go more about brush cleaning at the end. Now I want pink, so I take out a shade of pink, smudge it on a paper towel. See how much how much pigment I have when I first take it out. That's why I put on a paper towel so I can hold it just like this. And then now my brush have four colors. I have to knock up the excess dirt. That's rule number one. If you want to write it down, write it down. Knock up excess dirt. Just like that. So now you don't have to worry about dust shooting now. And remember the stroke in motion. When you land, you have to lip. When you land, you have to lip like this. See that? When you land, you have to lip. Don't just stop, okay? And with that, you blend it out. And remember, if it's too heavy, go ahead and do some removal. And then go on again. And you see, the pattern that I do right now is a fast pace. And when you technically blend, you do want to blend at fast pace. But when you practice, you don't want to practice as fast pace. That will mess you up. You want to practice a slow pace so you can see what you're doing wrong. Little more. Okay. Now, I want to make a teal colors. So again, I'm cleaning my, my brush. And I'm taking blue. I'm taking green. And I'm taking white. Okay. If it's too green, I'm adding more blue in. Because I still want it to be blue, but with a little lime green, it makes it brighter. So later on, I will have uh, pigment uh, mixing live and gel mixing live and color theory i will have all that but first you have to be able to blend a perfect pigment before you learn how to mix color together it's one step at a time to achieve perfection now as you can see my next color gonna be yellow but i'm not gonna do yellow right now i'm gonna do teal right here and I will explain in the second you see yellow is a lightest color that we have and if you see a little dust right here I see a tiny speck of dust right here you have to continue knocking it until there's no dust you see when you blend you're looking for the colors because at this point and assuming that your brush stroke is already perfect you don't look at your brush when you blend you look at the colors so at this point i'm monitoring the color to check on my perfection on blending right and when it's perfect i start right but you see on a color bright like yellow you're not gonna see anything it can look like it's perfect, but it might not. So if I start take up with yellow right here, and it's seemingly perfect, and then I start with green, what happened is it will turn out that it's not perfect because yellow is way too bright. I cannot see anything. So in case of a yellow that I'm um, making its present, I always do it last. I always do yellow last for a specific reason, and now you know why. Because I cannot see yellow. Okay, now I'm going to clean this. Okay, now start with yellow. Now the, the last color, you don't have to be as extreme as any of these because any of these you need to blend the color to white. So you need to be perfect. But the last colors, any of these are already blend. So you can just go in like crazy like this. Because it's the last color. You don't need to blend anymore. You need to fill in. That's it. So, brush stroke. Now, brush maintenance is extremely important. Many people say, how do you clean your brush? So, this brush, I'm done. And at this point, I'm working with neon colors. Okay, neon color is what you need to start it out first because these are extremely great pigment and the colors are not too stainy. Okay, so you start it out and when I'm done, I'm doing this. This is how I clean. Go crazy at it. 
And when I'm done, I pick up another colors. That's how I clean. Okay. But the further you go and you end up with these light. Let's say I have black pigment. Let's say I play with a black pigment and when I'm done, I want to go to <coughs> orange. Now, these are light and delicate colors. I'm just working with an extremely potent and strong color. At this point, there is a second type of cleaning, but this type requires you to have two different brushes. Okay. Now, the second type of cleaning that I'm going to show you is you take out a container. I'm going to use a very small container. This is a, like a shot glass. So I'm taking out a shot glass. Okay. I'm with just a little bit of acetone in it. This is pure acetone. And I dip my brush in. Okay. And I clean this. So it don't have color anymore. Okay. Keep cleansing it. And I... If a color that too potent, you can do it twice. One and then twice. Okay. See, it's much, much cleaner now. And then you take another paper towel and you dry it. Okay. And since it's acetone, it will evaporate in like 15 to 30 seconds. It will evaporate. So you leave it on the side for it to dry and you use a new brush on a different colors. And when you're done with this color and you clean this, at that point, the other brushes are ready for you to use. So you switch them in between. Now, when it comes to brush clean, the only thing that you should clean a pigment brush with is acetone. This is why, because acetone evaporates very fast and a lot of people are afraid that acetone would dry out their brush. That is when they use their brush with gels, but this is a pigment brush. The drier it is, the better it is. But if you use a slow evaporation like alcohol or water, what happens is your brush is going to stay wet for a long time, right? And by the time that it's dry, it's mold your brush in a different shape. And when your pigment brush have changed its shape, it's this game over for you. You have to buy a new brush because then when you brush it, you will notice that it's not as perfect as you want it to or not perfect as it usually do for you. That is how you detect your pigment brush when you have been doing pigment for a while and everything's perfect. And suddenly just one day, it just becomes a little difficult. That is the sign that you need to change your brush. But you have to be able to do perfect pigment first before you can detect that. Because sometimes when people do pigment that are not perfect, it can be so many things. It can be from the tool that they use, the material they use, the type of pigment they use, or the procedure, the blending drawer, the knocking up like this, and removal from the paper towel like that. It could be that too. Or it could be the brush stroke. When they stroke it not perfectly, they when they do the running like this, instead of the feathering, they do the running. It could be many, many things. So remember, you have to practice all that step to achieve perfect pigment. Then you can detect when your brush needs to be replaced. Now, that, that is brush maintenance. And sometimes, sometimes when I work with only neon colors, I don't really wash my brush in acetone. I just smudge it on a paper towel. Sometimes when with, with primary colors, I also smudge it on a paper towel. But when I'm in a hurry, I don't want to do that. So I'm just cleaning in acetone and replacing my brush. But that requires two different brush. Okay. Now, next thing is mixing drawers. So I'm going to change my paper towel to bounty. Can you give me a, a piece of bounty? Thank you. So this is a piece of bounty, or you can use a cheap paper towel. A cheap paper towel 
is something with weird pattern on it. It's super hard. Uh, it's annoying. And usually you have to, you know, when you go back room, you have to use like, you know, 10 different pieces instead of just one. You know what I mean? So cheap paper towel like this, at first I hate it. I don't want to use it. Uh, at first I use Viva. Viva is nice and soft. See, this is how absorbent it is. Nice and soft on Viva versus something hard and weird like this one. So I will explain for you why are you bounty now. And I love using cheap paper towel for mixing for a specific reason. In the beginning, when I'm mixing in something that are absorbing like paper towel, what I do, let's say I mix in blue and green together so i have one coat of blue on viva and just because viva whole color very well the color stuck right to it is grab the color which what i like in the beginning but at that point i'm not mixing color often i'm just doing one color at a time you know what i mean but when i'm getting more advanced i start to mix different colors and start to change the, the level of uh deep and light of each color, the, the, the tone of each color, I get more advanced. So what happened is when I put in blue on, the paper towel grab it. Now, when I put in green on, what happened is the green is sort of just, it's mixed with the blue, but it stay on top of the surface because it's so absorbent that the paper towel already holding the blue. So now the green is just floating on the surface. It should be still be blue, but now it's more green just because the blue has already been taken so well. And now I'm going to mix a little bit more blue. And of course, the green is holding the green very well too. So you have to spend more pigment on a surface that are absorbing like this versus a surface that are not absorbing. When I put my blue on, it hold in the pigment but barely so it's it's just like the pigment just sort of just staying on the surface the paper towel don't grab it it's just staying on the surface like this so when i mix in with my green it's blend very easy see the blue already submerged in the green see it blend a little more green in it's blend well because the surface is harder so that's why now i tend to bounty for that reason and it's very easy you can just uh, go on your local store and you can just chew a random paper towel like this and i guarantee you you end up with something hot like this versus viva you have to search for it because it's more expensive it's more absorbent but now you can feel free to just to use a cheap paper towel it's just sitting on top it's blend easier so you use less pigment it saves you money and time now that is color mixing drawer I am going to take out some gels. So I am going to take out a purple colors. Okay. So when you mix in gels with pigment, your rule is under 50% because what happened is gel is not raw. Gel have pigment on it, just like acrylic, just like everything else everything has pigment on it but only this are raw powders these are not raw these have been mixed with something they have mixed with a base you know a nice little uh, resin layers it have been mixed into it so it's already have pigment if you mix more than 50 percent there will be more pigment than base therefore when you put it on your client now and you cure it's gonna chip off very easy because it's too much pigment. It have too much pigment on it. So the rule is, if you choose to mix with a gel color, stay below 50%. My happy uh, limit is 30. 30% is perfect for me. And it's easy because it's not, it's not half of this. It's about one third. Okay, so I mix in some blue. There is an appropriate amount of pigment that I would choose. Okay. Put it on. Clean. And then now you can mix it together. Okay. To so transform your gel color into something new. 
and then when you're done mixing then what you do you take this all this dust right here you just turn away from your client and blow then now you have no more dust you just have liquid that's also another trick because you don't want to be painting and have draw color sitting all around it's contaminated and everything you don't want that blow it off now you end up with a new colors now that is mixing with gel colors you need to be well aware um if you want to be really safe then you have to choose a clear element this is a shandy it's a non-scratch top coat okay this is a matted soft and porous velvet top coat okay mix it in pink unshanded On matted. Now with this, I don't recommend a hundred percent because that's way too greedy. But you can go well above fifty. You can go sixty, seventy, your choice. Because what happened is those clear element, the clear top coat, it doesn't have anything in it, so it's completely curable. It's make it nice and easy and smooth to cure because it don't have pigment in it. So you can apply as much pigment as possible. One will turn shine, one will turn matte. Let's blow it up. Now, when it comes to mixing with a clear element, you also have to be well aware that when something's nice and bright like this, it is dry. When you deal with makeup, you know this very well, that when it's mixed with something wet, it gets heavier and darker or more pigmented okay so when you take a pink and you put it on a clear surface if it turned dark no worry if you want it to have a little white you just simply apply some white polish over like this just one dot and then you mix it and it will bring out the color instantly okay so how that is how you transform a colors just in case because when i first teaching my principle is you want your product to be minimal and have a lot of stuff a lot of people have thousands and thousands of gel polish that doesn't turn me on i like to have just 12 color gel polish and then 12 color of spark gel 12 color of glam gel 14 color of stained glass gel metal effect gel texture gel 3d gel clear textures pixie gels i like to have a lot and a lot of diversity in small and compact environment i don't like to have just one kind and a lot of it it's boring and it doesn't make magic so mm, this is just top coat you can also take 3d jelly okay 3d jelly is a non-white builder gel that i have you can take this 3d jelly out and also mix pigment in and that will make a gel paint and i do have a gel paint called art gel but you see art gel is a little different than just being thick art gel doesn't blend and i like to use it for different special effects like stroking one stroke effect or um art gel i also use to do full coverage because it's nice and smooth um but with a 3d gel you can also make a thick gel but this one gonna be more cell level because 3d gel is cell level so mixing in with pink again And you can mix a lot in if you want. Just like that, become a gel pen instantly. Now you have a new gel pen colors. So that is a rule for pigment mixed with pigment and pigment mixed with gels 
So now we are going over the type of things that cannot hear pigment. So I already introduced to you pigment base. I already introduced this to you because this is a go-to. Okay, you go for design, the whole background, or take this and paint like leaf and flowers with pigment on. This is a go-to because it's white. It show up its color at the brightest. So I love pigment bay. But you see, if I have a background, let's take this one take a different color tone okay if i have this okay and let's say that you know want to blend some other color in it okay what i am going to do is not using white or anything to have colors because what happened is when i paint this on oh it's gone it's totally gone how now I have to start over again. So when it comes time to blend color onto something that already have color and you want to see that color too, you don't use pigment bay or you don't use anything to have colors, which we have uh, our spark gel. It's a glitter gel that cannot hear pigment. Okay. A glam gel. Glam gel and spark gel. It's kind of hair pigment. Both kind of hair pigment. Our stained glass gel. Kind of hair pigment too. Okay. Many of our product kind of hair pigment. Why is definitely the go to, but when it comes to a situation like this one, then you need something that are clear. So that's why you need matted because matted. It's also one of the elements that also can hear pigments. But you see, matted is more special because matted allows you to see the background. So I want to color this in. I am going to apply one coat of matted. Now, when it comes to your foundation, I want to warn you about something because just like pigment base, there's many, many different kind of matte with different level of ingredients. Now, when it comes to matte, this is what you're looking for. If you don't have um, my matte, but you have other matte top coat, this is what you're looking for. Number one, you have to make sure that when you apply your matte on, it's cell level. It's extremely important to be cell level because a lot of matte doesn't have cell level element, which means it's sticky and it refuses to be smooth. Well, guess what? When you boot in your lamp and cure and take it out, you don't see the streak because matte doesn't show glare. But if you use it for pigment and you put it in and take it out, you don't see the streak. You put the pigment on, you will see it. So you have to make sure you use the light, the light on your ceiling to make sure that your nail are flawless, smooth. That is a very important quality of the mask that you're looking for. Second thing is porousness. You want something that porous or else it's not going to catch pigment at all. So this mat right here, if you full here and apply pigment, you can. But it will be a little lighter. My favorite is the 10 second rules. I'm going to put this in for 10 seconds and cure. So when I take it out, my pigment will be more vibrant. But you see, after I apply pigment, I have to keep curing because I only cure for 10 seconds. Now, your mat could be different than mine. Your lamp could be different than mine. So at home, if you want to test out your mat, you need to make sure that you cure about 5 seconds. If it turns matte, dry it. If it's still too wet, here again for about a few seconds take it out try it again so you can have a um, specific timing due to your mat and to your lamp so i'm gonna put this on and i'm gonna count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now when i take it out it's all nice and matte now if 
your nail is too curvy or your lamp doesn't have a good side angle and you still see like shiny spot on the side you need to take a flash here and make sure that those shiny spots are gone it become matte so everything can be nice and cohesive so now we're gonna blend over these colors let's choose indigo So this is a primary color, it's darkest. Okay, these are the base I'm blending on. So I have another paper towel that I'm removing pigment. And pigment base completely sold out right now. It's in California right now. So that is a very good sign. It should be here in just about a few days or maybe math is a week. But I am glad in California right now. It's already arrived the U.S. Now, these pigment, primary pigment, are very stainy. Mm, we have specific tool to block our pigment, but you see uh, these primary pigment, it go on anything. It doesn't care if that surface light pigment or not, it will go on it. And I found that out when um, I rub in this red pig, uh, primary pigment onto my clear silicone, and when I'm done, my finger are red. And I thought, I'm just going to go wash my hand and it's going to come up. Well, 20 minutes later, I'm still washing my hand. So that's how I find out. So with these advanced pigment, make sure you gloves. But it can go on extremely well. Look at that. So this is a scenario where I want to blend, but I want to blend on something that already have colors. I want to see the color that is already have, and I want to see the additional color that I put on. That is when you mat it. When you achieve perfection and when you're happy with your look, you go ahead and put it into the machine for about 50 seconds because you only cure this for 10. Put this in and continue curing so your uh, work doesn't have problem. You know, when it comes to functionality, you don't want it to be cheap, easy or anything like that. So you need to be well aware of your timing too. Make sure you don't forget to re cure it right after you're done with pigment. Now, before we continue, we are still at these material to adhere pigment. I show you pigment base, I show you matted. Let me show you the rest. So, I would choose my colors. I want a pink. No, actually, let's stay with this one. Um, a beige spark gels. Oh, actually, a, a, a gold spark gel. Okay, a gold spark gel. Uh, magenta colors. Color is a mixing gel polish that I have. That 12 color can mix to 160 colors. Stained glass gels. Let's do a pink one. Stained glass. Okay, stained glass gel pink. And glass gel also can cure. Uh, and apply pigment on. Let me see if I have anything else. Okay. Those are what I'm going to choose to apply pigment on. So, any corners? Okay, let's apply color first. Mm. Just using one color is a little boring. Let's mix magenta and aqua together to make it funness. Okay, I'm gonna take a palette. You see, this is when I first started out. When I first started out, I don't have a lot of gel. 
and not a lot of money to buy a lot of gel. So what I do is I learn how to mix. That is a great, great um, thing that uh, happened because now I can teach you how to mix. And we will <coughs> have color theory and mixing lesson very soon. Make it into a lavender. Okay. Here this for sixty seconds. And another thing is if you have dust on tape, your table, like I have a little hair right here, okay, you kind of want to take that hair off because if you um if you were polishing nail or something, sometimes you can get away with things like that because when you put top coat on, you're not going to see anything. But when you put, work with something with like pigment or chrome, any small chain on the surface, you can see it when you put the pigment or chrome on. So what you want to do is eliminate that. So your surface be nice and smooth. Kiss it for 60 seconds. And then let's uh, do one now that have stained glass. And just to make it funner, let's go ahead and use um, Mirror Lander gels to make a base for our stained glass. Okay, so I yield one thin coat of Mirrorlana gels. I am going to cure this for 60 seconds. And now while waiting for, for it to cure, I am going to use spark gels. Spark gel is not a glitter gel, it is a lead gel that ensure that it's not bumpy, it's all nice and smooth and completely solid. That is spark gel. I use a lot with background. Using spark gel, going in, 60 seconds. Okay, and my mirror liner up here, I am putting on my stained glass gel. I'm gonna choose pink. Okay, wait for its cell level and put it in here. And while I'm waiting for those to cure, I am gonna put in some glams gel. Now glams gel is a glitter gel. So I am putting on one coat of glams gel. And glam gel have junky glitters and fun glitters. So it's a, it's a mixed colors. I'm putting one coat of glam gel. And I am going to use my ombre sponge. With my ombre sponge, I am going to soak up the top coat of my glam gel. So it's not thick and bulky. But the glitter remains, just the top coat has been soaked up. So now I can put in the second coat right there without curing. And again, you still can soak up the top coat of your glam gel. I have glam gel because back in the day, if I want to work with chunky glitter, I have to take raw glitters and uh, encapsulate with acrylic. But over time, I get tired of doing that. When I want a glitter background, I don't want to have 
to jump to a hoop of doing encapsulation where acrylic because then next time my client come back I have to do all that work to remove then grind up all the color glitter acrylic and it's just messy so I prefer gel that's why I make glam gel and the ombre sponge to help people achieve the glamorous background with junky glitter and with how to have to jump to the acrylic hoops Okay, so when you're happy, you put in one final coat of glams and you cure. And a lot of people think, oh, it looks so solid. That may, must be so thick. Look at that. Extremely thin. And it's extremely thin because I didn't do many coat. Technically, I just do one coat. I just choose to soak up the top coat of each layer. So now, one beautiful coat can achieve you the same effect. And if you use a lot, a ton of glitters and a ton of acrylic and then capsule slate, all that same result, put it in. Thank you, Dustin. And all of these kind of here's pigments. So let's have here some pigments. Colors, then glass, glass, spark. And I need to clean this brush. As done, cleaning the brush. Put back in the bottles. All right. Now this one, let's blend it with a nice, nice uh, blue. You see, this lesson is extremely powerful, and until this day. Even with a lot of master nail artists, I still haven't seen flawless pigment blend. So when you learn this, you have to know that this is one of your big golden ticket to get up there because pigment are still very desirable. It's a very desirable skill for most people, even with advanced nail artists. So that will help you catching up with all of us. Is understood pigment and know how to blend it like a pro. And it doesn't really take much hand skill. Most people think it's because of my hand now. It's because of all the steps I went through and I remember all my homework. Blend it all the way through. Let's add a little indigo just for the fun of it. Now, normally, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't add another color on top of somewhere that already had pigment. But you see, indigo is part of the primary colors. And as I say, it's very stainy. So I can even apply it on top of something that already been taken by pigment and it's still take. Make the surface just a little darker. Now, you have to remember that dusty especially the fluffy brush are extremely important. Um, I have learned this a hard way because I have the fluffy brush forever and I never once advertise in the fluffy brush because to me, everybody have a fluffy brush or whatever is, is that they're using, it's gonna work. But in this trip to California, I have forget my fluffy brush at home and it has been a disaster when it comes to dusting, pigment or chrome. So now I'm gonna explain for you that when you use a dusty brush, you need a couple of quality from it. You need the bristle to be long because if the bristle are not long, it's gonna be stiff. Short and stiff are not gonna work. Also, you need something that are happening very soft top. Anything that are stiffy gonna scratch a pigment. And you want something that are loose like this. See that? This loose spread out easy versus something 
that are constricted like this, then they're gonna be very stiff. So if you have a makeup brush that are exactly like this, take it and use it. It's time. Dust it. When I dust, I don't dust lightly. I dust very aggressively. But because of the build of my brush, it doesn't hurt my pigment. It doesn't scratch it. This one is colors for gel colors. Then this one going to be stained glass gel. Let's choose purples. See that? When you get to know pigment, you are gonna be addicted. Now, a lot of people doesn't know pigment or they like pigment, but they don't have proper education on pigment. Oh, they're afraid to dead of pigment. Everyone, not just beginners, oh, even advanced people, they're afraid of pigment just because of the blending. But when you get to know the, all the step, all the golden rule, oh, addicting. Pigment is addicting because you're borrowing the power of makeup. And makeup has brought its own industry up so far ahead. Can you imagine have the power of makeup? You can do anything. You can conquer the world. Now, let's choose spark gel. These spark gels. Uh, let's choose pink. Beautiful. And let's choose blue for this. And you have to know that when this live is posted and saved on my highlight, not just beginner will watch this live, but advanced nail tech people that are in my circle, they will watch this live too. So you're on a race, okay? And everybody have a fair chance because again, everybody gonna be learned from the beginning level of pigment. So everyone have a fair chance. It is your time to try to catch up. Now, when it comes to glitters like this, when you first put it on, you have some of you might be panicking. They may be like, oh, look at all my beautiful glitters. Look at this. Now, wherever there's colors, I don't see my glitter anymore. What should I do? You have to remember that I built spark gel and glam gel so it can be pigment friendly. So of course, when you put top coat on, you're gonna see every speck of glitter that is. Beautiful. See that? Now it's color glitters. So let imagine you take something glamorous like this and you have five different color blend on people are not going to have a clue of what you use. People are going to be like, do you color acrylic? Do you use, do you blend color gel together? What do you do? And when something that seems to be confusing to watcher and viewer, that means that it's going to be expensive. Only things that are predictable or cheap, but things that are confusing and messing with people's eyes is going to be expensive. And when I apply, I would love to use a palette like this because I don't want to dip it into my bottle and keep it there because that kind of contaminate my bottle. You can dip in a little, but not keeping it staying inside the bottle. It's not healthy when you work with color like this. See that? Beautiful. Now, we learned about 
what love pigment now we are going to learn about what hate pigment and you need to know that because imagine you have a nice background like this okay imagine if you want like some flower and leaf that also make with pigment you are not going to put pigment base on here draw on a leaf and flower and put pigment on because even though these already have pigment right it still can take pigment it might not be able to take pigment very well but it will take a little bit and imagine this bright yellow have just a teeny tiny bit of blue it would ruin everything it would ruin the look of it it will make it not nice and clean so these are when you need to know about what block pigment okay i will show you what block pigment i called it a double uh double layer pigment technique I have developed this about uh, two or three years. Okay, so I want to make a flower and leaf. So first, I need to put on a top coat that can prevent pigment from sticking on it. When I first started out, this is what I use. I use sanded and sanded is scratch proof. Some top coat, if it not know why, then it still can take pigment. But you see, with a scratch proof top coat, it's hot. It doesn't take anything. It doesn't like pigment. I put this on. Okay. Now I have a couple of techniques, and you sorry to interrupt this pigment lesson, but let's talk about chrome. I just want to clear out some confusion is that chrome is not pigment and pigment is not chrome. So I use this to block pigment. You don't use the same thing to block chrome. Chrome love no white. Chrome will stay on no white, but pigment hate no white. Pigment don't want to stay on no white. So I use this to block pigment. And then for chrome, I put on some top coat and then I buff it. Then chrome will not stay stick on the to a background. So there's different knowledge there and sometimes people mistake one to another. So that's why I have made my newest top coat car Teflon mat. Teflon mat doesn't stick to pet pigment. Teflon mat doesn't stick to chrome. This is a one stop shop. So when it comes to blocking chrome or pigment, Teflon mat do it all. So when it comes to pigment block, if you don't have Teflon mat, which is a very special top coat, then what you can take is any no white top coat you have. But remember to test it out first before you do it on your client, because again, anything can happen and you don't know what you got. If you doesn't have Tinovo product, you doesn't know if that product work or if that product does not work. So it's very important for you to test. Testing is extremely, extremely essential to our business before we perform to our client. So, with this right here, I will put on one coat of Teflon mat. here and before I put it back in it's very important that I clean it or you can even clean it with some asphalt these brushes are fun to clean with asphalt because they are synthetic okay put it back in then and we will go over how to not bleed your pigment in just a second. But first, let's take out our pigment base and let's draw a little flowers. And pigment base, the same thing. You have to make sure 
that you yield a white gel polish that are nice and smooth. And there is a lot of different white gel polish out there, I'm telling you. You need one that make it perfect. That's why I don't name this white polish. I name it pigment bay. So when people need to use for pigment, they will know exactly what to use. You see my naming system are exactly at how it is. Teflon mat. If you use Teflon pen, you know that Teflon pen doesn't stick to anything. So remember the name will guide you through it. Now I already have Teflon mat on. I'm gonna draw. So let's draw some flower and leaf. One leaf. Gonna have another leaf right here, another leaf right here. Gonna have one leaf right here, and then one leaf right here, and right here too. And color it in. Now, after I'm done, I am going to take this and cure this 60 seconds. And hmm, color, what colors? Let's do orange and green. Which orange? Green, when it meet each other, it create an unpleasant colors. So you need a bridge. You need yellow as a bridge. Yellow are good with orange. Yellow are good with green. Okay, wait for it. Blocking pigment are very essential. All right. So now remember, I have colors. And then I have one layer of Teflon mat. Now I draw so I can feel free to apply pigment on now. I want green light here, orange right here, and yellow. Ooh, the background is already yellow. I have to choose another colors. Let's choose green up here, then blue, and then purple. Okay. Start out with green. Then go with blue. Then go with purples. Now. And remember, for something that doesn't adhere to pigment, like if you do a no white top coat and you apply pigment on, it's still going to stick on, right? But when you dust it, it's all come up. When you top coat, it's all come up. So remember that. Now dust it off. Look at that. Look at the level of sharpness that it's had. So beautiful and sharp cut. Again, something like this, people are not going to have any clue of what you're doing. They're going to be like, well, how come your background is a different colors? And how come your design is different colors? What do you do? Do you use stickers? Do you use a stamp? What do you do? And something that raises questions to people costs more money.
me. Remember that as a nail tech, you have to know what's cost money. What's cost money is not something that look at and they know how to do. What costs a lot of money is something that they look at and they confuse because that means that not a lot of nail tech in your area know how to do that. And when you are the one that got in the first dip, you're going to be the popular one and you're going to be the one that make all the money. So remember that something that great question to people, that is your meal ticket right there. So now it's up to who learned it faster than the others. Now, when it come to applying top coat, I need to point this out. Okay, this is seal pigment. Okay, when it come to pigment like this, Okay. How people top coat is like this. Let me show you. Okay. People like to do this a lot. They mm -hmm. like to do this. So I take some top coat out and they go. Stroke. They keep they keep stroke in the surface. That's number one. Okay, it's because they're afraid, they're afraid it's gonna bleed. So it's a light stroke. And, and when you do the light stroke, let me find out another now. See a light stroke. Do you see all the spot missing? That's missing spot everywhere. So you have to go over it again and again and again and again. And you're gonna bleed your pigments. You don't want that. Your stroke, you want to be light in pressure and slow like this. Because when you apply slow, your gel have time to adhere on the surface. The moment that the brush making contact with the surface, if you give it just enough time, the gel will lay on the surface. But if you brush it out really quick, it's not going to have time to do anything. It's not going to fall into the surface. So you have to know that the moment the brush make contact with the surface, you have to slow down and when you slow down you only need to stroke on one spot one time so now you can move on to another spot and then another spot and remember light pressure and slow okay so that is one thing that people did it this that's my pet pet peeve Okay. And not the one of my pet B is when they do this. <clears throat> when they do this. They press in the brush and then go like this. Really strong. Really strong down. No. You have to be light like a feather. You have to flow on top of the surface. So when I apply pigment, I take out my top coat and I taking care of my client cuticle first. And then I glow over. Okay. Do like that. Now if you deadly, deadly afraid of Matt, you'd be like, oh I can't, I don't want to. No, no, I, I'm afraid. It's okay. It's okay to be afraid. Then at that point, let's try something else. Let's try something that are super for beginners, super friendly. So shine doesn't, it's not risky like matte. Now, it still can be risky if you keep playing with it forever, but shine is more forgiving. So in the case you're afraid of math so much, then you can take shine and apply on first. It's more friendly. You don't even have to cover the cuticle entirely. You can just go really fast on the surface, clear. Then after it's clear, your pigment is sealed. Then you can take your mat out. You can take your mat out and you can slowly take care of your client cuticle like this. Because at that this time, it doesn't matter how much you're stroking your brush, it's not going to ruin your pigment because the shine top coat is already underneath protecting your pigment. So now you can put your mat on top of your shine and that, that will bring it into full mat. Okay, you can do that. But that is two layer of top coat. But if you're deadly afraid of mat, 
remember you have option you're not stuck so that is for the conclusion of our lesson i will go over it one more time this is going to be your theory Okay, now, when it comes to pigment, number one is tour. Diving into pigment, you need to check three things. You need to check on foundation, and in this case, I use pigment based. So the first thing is your base, okay? That is the first thing that you should check if you have imperfect pigment. Second thing, type of pigment. Now remember that Indian pigment is way, way better than the rest in whatever country it's from, okay? Indian pigment is way, way better. And right now in the market, the most influential pigment that a lot of people use are Chinese pigment because Chinese pigment are way cheap, but it's very grainy. And even one of the company in China have copied my packaging which have my name on it, they copy my packaging and they put in all the colors. And when people use it, they'll be like, oh, Tino, why are you in the similar uh, one that I bought on Amazon and it wouldn't turn out beautiful like your? Just remember, you need something that come from India, not China. Now, type of pigment is done, bait is done. Now it comes to brushes and remember, for brushes, you need something that are flat, but fluffy, okay? So you can tilt it, your brush, and run. Because if it ran like this, you cannot do this. You have to do this, which is very difficult to do this. You want to tilt it. That's why you need something that are flat and fluffy. Now, number two is blending drawer. These are the golden drawer. Number one is knock off excess dust. Okay. Number two is um, knock off excess dust and light then up your brush when you blend okay and you see me doing this on a paper towel when in the middle of blending i run my brush through the paper towel just a couple of times that's me weaken up my brush so it can blend more easy especially for heavy-handed people number three is brush stroke And remember, hover, make contact, and lift. And it has to be a slow lift like this. Hover, make contact, lift. Hover, make contact, lift. Hover, make contact, lift. Okay, this is an incorrect motion. Hover, make contact. Hover, make contact. Like that. This is not blending. You have to lift like a feather. Now, brush maintenance. Maintenance. Okay, dry. Exclamation mark. Okay, dry brushing 
is number one. Number two is Aston. But you have, you have two brush for that. Okay, and remember, if a brush that you use anything other than Aston, what happened is it will stay wet for a long time. And when a brush is wet, that it will be a chance that if it stay wet at a certain stage, it will mold your brush. It become different. The bristle will be different. So when the bristle is different, the pigment is not. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. Brush maintaining. Now, uh, mixing drawers. When it comes to dry mix. Use non absorbing paper towel and then two is gel mix below 50% for colors color gel above 50% for clear gel. Now, mixing drawer is done. At here's pigment number six. At here, pigment. Now, I have pigment base and others. Pigment base and others. for design and then I have matted for surfacing to put on something that already have colors and you can still see the colors that's matted now seven black pigment Teflon mat or no wipe top, top coat and seal pigment. Remember this light pressure and slow stroke. are all for sealing pigment. Okay. And if you can't, if you can't, then one coat uh, alternative option. One coat of no white then one coat of mat safest choice i do this when i first started i don't do that anymore but now and then when i'm not in the mood of focusing i always do that you put your notes and blow it up so like a screenshot yes And remember, this is a type of lie where you need to watch multiple times because every single information that on here are essential to reach perfection. Question? All right, question and answer time, everybody. Time for question. Okay. Have you been taking screenshot of question? Uh, there really wasn't many. Oh, good, good. Kim. KMG Designs, Kim, she got distracted and stuff and missed a little something. It's okay. This is a live uh, what you can rewatch. The question was, mm -hmm. um, uh, where to go? Uh, I was interrupted. Did Tino say to seal with shiny before matte? 
that is a that is a choice that you make when you are afraid of matte okay because matte complete pigment and complete chrome it because when people stroke they stroke too fast so they have to do multiple stroke and blood they they stroke too hard and they scratch it their pigment so the a way that i apply matte is that light pressure and slow stroke but you see for a beginner that they are terrifying of matte then it's okay then i have alternative option alternative option is you apply one coat of shine because shine is very friendly it's, it's not gonna ruin your pigment and after you cure your shine you apply your mat that is what you do in the beginning but later on like after a year you don't have to do that anymore because now you're probably a pro and you probably just go with it um go ahead so Kino's been doing nails for 14 years. Yes. How do you clean your brushes while, uh, after a while of using the pigments? Yes, that is two way of cleaning the brush. Like I show that one that you dry brush it just like this. When you rewatch, you can see me dry brushing it until it's gone away. That's dry brushing. Number two, and I do this when I work with pigments that are too heavy and then I switch to a light color pigment, I don't want it to stain my brush. So what happened is I take out Aston. And I dip it in and I clean this. And the reason why I use Aston because it's fast evaporation. So with a fast evaporation after about 30 seconds, it'd be dry. So after I clean in this like this, I smudge it on a paper towel so it can dry it. And then I put it on the side. And then I yield a different brush. See, put this on the side. And then I yield a different brush. And I continue mixing my colors. And when I'm done with my colors, I clean in it. And again, squeeze it in the paper towel so it can dry. And then the put it on the side and then I use this brush for next colors. Now if you use anything other than Aston like alcohol or water what happened is it will stay wet for a long time and it's gonna mold your brush it's gonna be different and you need your bristle to stay a certain way for perfect result. Do you want to know Viva and or Bounty paper towels correct? Yes Viva or Bounty. Now when I first started I use Viva and until this day, I still love Viva. I love it for its absorbentness. So it's whole thing better. It's less messy. But sometimes when it comes to mixing, I'd rather use a bounty because then it's not absorbed very well. It just stay on the surface so I can mix it easier. Um, Abby wanted to know, uh, if you were to do the pigment seahorse set, mm -hmm. Uh, where you did the seahorse in sections to get the pigment ombre like you wanted, would you do that any differently? Um, I have two ways. Way number one is I follow rule exactly. And I say you have to know all the rule before you break in it. Um, what happened is I done a section and then I can put on a layer of shined or Teflon mat and then I do another section. My way number two is that I plan a section and then when I plan I plan this way and then when I make another section what happened is I dodge it by turning my brush because remember a flat brush have two sides so I use a narrow side to blend carefully so it don't stuck on the next color that is a way of me cheating and I cheat when there is a lot of different part like let's say uh on a double layer pigment i done it once i seal and then i done it again that's just two time but for a seahorse with a lot of part let's say five different times i'm not gonna apply five different layer of top coat just to block something that are so minor so at that point i start using like the feature of my brush and use a narrow side to dodge it um so bod bodrum calico something uh yes he ships to turkey um does and this is from daily with deb does the pigment stick to gel yes now pigment sticks to a very specific layer of inhibition and as i say in the beginning 
the gel that you choose, it have to have a semi-dry inhibition layers because if your gel is no white, it's not gonna stick on. If you, your gel is too wet, like when you cure it and when you take it out and when you, you touch your finger on it and it's a little wet on your finger, what happened is it, it's gonna smudge. Just like when you put makeup on, if you take a bunch of lotion and you slather on your face and then you, and, and then you have a deep chance for it to get dry. You just lather and you feel like dripping with lotion and oil. And then you take some powder foundation and you try to brush it on. What will happen? Will it be a perfect bland contour? No, it'll be a hot mess. So just like the surface of pigment, this has to be appropriate. And number three is your gel have to be cell level very well because certain white gel is semi-streaky and it will make your pigment streaky. So when it comes to the base, it has to be a very, very special gel polish. Go on. Um, David, that began when he put the pigment over the sealed glitter, what did the pigment stick to? When I put the pigment over this right here, what happened is spark gel, glam gels, stained glass gel and colors i don't put any additional thing because these i make specially for pigment also so all of these kind of here's pigment it's just that white is the most popular because it gives the color a chance for a blank state meaning it show the color at its fullest potential these just a little extra so when i apply this on glams what happened is I don't put anything else. I just put glams on like this. And then I apply pigment on and pigment stick on glam. Now, this glam are not sealed when I put pigment on. The reason why it's so flawless and perfect because I use the glam and sponge technique. These are very special technique that I made because most of the time when people put in chunky glitter like this, what happened is it's, it's not solid yet. So they thinking, well, if I'm gonna cure it and if I'm gonna put on another coat, it's gonna be way too thick. So a product like that make people nervous. But I use a sponging technique where I can soak up all the top coat that are on the surface right here. So now there's no top coat, that's just glitters. So I can apply on a surface multiple time and when I'm done it's all gonna be nice smooth and solid and people just doesn't know why it's so flawless and so smooth it's it's not because I seal the glitters because most of the time when people do glitter like this it's not flawless and smooth it's rough and it's bumpy and it's bulky and it out of everything is out of shape but when you use a sponging technique, you can achieve flawless result on just one application, one layer without curing anything. You can go ahead and cure now and look at how nice and shine and smooth it is. Unseals. <clears throat> Jaxie wants to know, gel paint does not have a tacky layer. If I wanted to use black pigment for shadowing, how would I do that? You cannot use something that doesn't have a tacky layer. You have to use something that have a tacky layers. And the products that I use are special like for that because the inhibition in, inhibition layer that I choose are very specific. That's different level of inhibition. And I have choose layer of inhibition layer that fit for pigment. So when it comes to gel pain, I choose art gel and my art gel is not no white. My art gel can adhere chrome and pigment. It cannot adhere chrome as flawless as metal effect, but it can adhere chrome to a certain level and it also can adhere pigment. So when it comes to a gel pen, don't chew a no white gel pen. And if your gel pen is no white, you have to put it aside and just settle with a gel polish to pen. It will be a little difficult to pen with gel polish. However, with pigment base, you don't have to worry about that because the consistency that I make for pigment base is not just for polishing now, it's also for designing. Go ahead. 
What is the best gel to use if I am doing nails? Um, when you do nail, you want to look for something with special effect. So you don't want a wall of just hundred and hundred of just gel colors. That's too boring. You need something to have color. You need something to have glitter. You need something to have flake. You need something that can adhere thing. You need something that can block thing. So uh, if you want to do now, you want to look in for diversity now. For gel polish, what you want to look for is a gel polish that have good coverage. You don't want something that w very watery. You want something that cover well, but not crazily cover because those have too much pigment and it will cut your nail to chips. So you want to look for something um, that are like 90% coverage with just a little gift, just enough that your gel can cure properly. So coloring is very important when it comes to gel. You don't want something that you have to do like two or three coats. You don't want that. Go ahead. How do you clean the sponge? When it comes to sponge, it is cheap enough for me to toss one sponge after every single client because a sponge is less than a dollar and one of my ombre technique or one of my service i charge like 20 25 extra dollars so after i'm done i'm just tossing it now when it comes to wanting to preserve your sponge if your sponge have gel colors what you can do is you can tap it on a paper towel until the color's gone and they're gonna be stain left behind but if you're using gel color, that's fine. Now, if you're using glitter, that's different. You don't want to contaminate it. So just in case you want to preserve your glitter sponge, which I advise you to toss it in the trash can, that will save you more time and money. But if you choose to preserve it, I suggest that you have a drawer or a box and you save all your little sponges with those colors. And when you use a color again, you take out the same sponge and you use it. So either dab it on the paper towel or keep it just like this in the box go ahead that's it so far i think you've answered them all uh yes one that says uh tino you sound dehydrated uh yes he ships to turkey yes we are worldwide uh yes he sells the sponges yes it's on essential category in tino Voda's shop Oh, I think we're looking pretty good. We're done you know. with questions. Oh, there, there was one up above, I think it was from Boss Babe, about, okay. I may not be getting it right, but I want to find it, about how do you get rid of bubbles in nails? Okay, that's many, many kind of bubble in nails. So when you take a gel polish you, and you apply over the surface, if you see tiny little speck and it bubble, if that's bubble, when you brush it again it should disappear but it's not the speck is still there if that speck is there then that means that it's dust that is case number one case number two and i'm assuming from your word usage i'm just gonna assume in that what you say is the most common problem that people have is when they apply top coat over color it's spread out little circles that are spreading out and they put top coat again and it just keeps spreading out and they put in top coat on it again and it seemed to be fine but then a few seconds later it keeps spreading out these little irritating little bubbles but not like a not like a soap bubble more like a space an empty space when that happened you have to check your colors uh the foundation underneath before you top coat some gel polish will have a layer of inhibition layer that will cause that and it's not mean that it's a bad gel polish it just means that whatever ability that they want that gel polish to achieve the ingredient in there make the gel polish that way if you have any brand of gel polish that are do that it's very easy fix First, you take a paper towel, you soak it in alcohol, not acid, it will wrinkle your polish. Take an alcohol and you wipe up the inhibition layers. Then when it dry, you put on top coat, everything will be perfect. That will be problem solved for you. So Deb had two questions. Mm -hmm. What's your recommendation for the first kit of yours? And does it matter what artificial nails you practice on? Say it again. 
What the first what recommend is your recommendation for the first kit of yours? Um, for a person that just started out, you see the reason why I don't have a kit yet, because to me, there's many different kind of artists, and I cover all aspects. There is pigment that I do. A lot of people like to blend, work with colors. Um, there is 3D chrome. A lot of people like chrome. A lot of people like 3D. Um, there is gel paint, uh, gel polish, and stained glass gel for character painting. A lot of people like different character painting. So there is different kind of group of product for different artists. Um, for for me to recommend a kit for you, what you should do is watch it as much light as possible and define what kind of artist you are and then choose the product that I choose use on live. Now, start it out in a blank space. The first thing that you should have are a nice set of brush. Because brush means everything. Like like Lana brush like this. I just have Lana brushes at convenience just at people convenience so so in salon if they like to do like you know land like that they can't but for me to achieve like a like a really delicate land like let's say uh i want a land to be like this then i need an art brush for me to be nice even and delicate because a liner brush would never do that for you so a nice set of brush is essential <laughs> at first. And then um, when it comes to, let's say, uh, oh, polish, you have to have that first. I'm not saying that you are a mm, person that like character painting, but even without doing character painting, you have to understand the three important elements that people that, uh, do character painting use number one is gel polish because gel polish are uh, cell level when you want to paint a face if i color my whole face i need a gel polish not a gel paint and then after i color my whole face when i use a gel paint i use it for detail for my eye uh frame my face stuff like that even with blending i still using gel paint to blend because gel polish is liquidy is runny but um when it comes to uh blending blending i suggest you use stained glass gel because stained glass gel is semi-transparent it's great for shading it's great for create contrast shadow and highlight so that is the three important element that a cartoon artist or just a nail person have to have is number one gel polish number two gel paint and then number three stained glass gel and then after you get that you can venture out to different special effect and i have many group so i couldn't recommend you with special effect because with special effect you have to define what kind of artist you are because there's many things i do everything i don't do just one thing but i told you the essential brushes polish gel pen and stained glass gel go ahead we had a whole bunch all at once. <laughs> um, can you bridge between two pigments be created with white pigment? Um, no. Mm, the bridge between two pigments cannot create it by white. Um, because, let me cure this one. And then before I forget, they want to know how to clean their liner brushes. Okay. Um, and, and so I haven't teach them how to clean a liner brush on the line work uh, on lesson. The video? Okay. 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 So let's say I take green and pink, which are a very annoying combo because green and pink totally will mess with colors. First, I make pink and i'm not saying that you cannot use white um you cannot use white pigment i'm just saying that um depending on what you're doing um i want to show you what it does so you can be well aware of the problem or in your case this might not even be a problem but when i go green like this and let's say i uh, go pink like this and let's say i want to go green 
Go green. <laughs> now, the reason why are you a bridge? Because a bridge is a very small space in between. So, uh, in this case, I will use yellow, and yellow will um because a color needs to have a transition. Okay. When I put yellow on pink, what happened is my pink will go slowly to to like orange pink and it go to orange and it will go to orange yellow and then it will go to yellow and those small little segments are the transition but you see pink and green the transition will be brownish so that's why you yellow because yellow thick with pink and yellow thick with green now i'm gonna do yellow on just one side half the nails okay so this is my yellow it's my bridge Okay. Now, instead of yellow, if you were to choose white, what happened is your pink will go to a transition to light pink, to light pink to white, and then it will start to green, to, to light green and to green. So if that is what you want, white will be perfect for it. See, this transition right here is with white. So I'm not saying that you cannot use white. You just have to be aware of what it does. It's weakened up the color before the color disappear, and not the color. It will continue to another color. But when you do that, you need a, a good space in between, and you need a good ombre, or else you're just going to see two colors stacking on top of each other, and it's not going to be like this. It's not going to be nice and smooth like this, like this one right here. So be aware of that. Go ahead. Um, so Bailey with Deb said, thank you. I love the idea of not having a wall of color. I know my color will. So earlier she was asking about what would be the first kit to get. I would have to say the color kit because show the, the, uh, so with those 12 colors, you get 144. Yeah. See, it's my newest system. And my new system. 50, 50 mix. All right, go ahead, sorry. My new system is called Colors. I named it Colors because that is just how I sound, Colors. So okay. I have 12 colors and with pigment base excluding in the kit, but 12 colors, when you mix together, it's 166 colors. But you see, with this color, when it comes to mixing, it might um, make a lot of people nervous but you have to know that 12 color don't just make 168 colors or 166 colors 12 color can make thousand and thousand and thousand of different colors we are just talking about the 50 50 combo which are the easiest mixing combo out there that any beginner can do is one drop of this color and one drop of that color that's it just 50 50 so that will make people less nervous because you are blending just half and half that's easier if you go a little heavier on this side then this you're like like one color tone on here it can go from from um let's say if i choose something that make a magenta and red okay from magenta and red is this color right here but it can go a little more magenta or a little more red so each one can make like 10 20 different shades so you have to know that 166 different color is just the easiest that you can do but when you get used to blending you have to know that 12 color can make thousand and thousand of different colors so uh tino are you going to do the tortoise, show them the tortoise design on a live? Yes, I will. This is different. This live is a big live. And then what color would you use to bridge if you did a red and green blend? Oh, so you still have to think about what color go good with green and what color go good with red. So mm, Pink is out of the question. Pink good with red, but not with good green. So uh, pink. And then blue. Blue make the red purple. Um, 
blue will make good with the green but blue is is a little bit different when you mix red and green together you will get like a um let me see red go with green so you will get like a color like this when you mix red and green together it will be this color so i guess blue will be appropriate because blue is dark enough to match this colors but um Mm, let's move on to let's say orange out of the question so yellow yellow is good yellow good with red yellow with, with green but it'd be light enough so in this case i might choose blue what type of gel is in the liner gel i don't have liner gel but um uh, liner gel consistency is a little bit thicker than gel colors and um a little bit thinner than gel paint uh my fairy gel is very close to lander gel it's a glow gel that glow in the dark that's about it that's about it, that's it. are you sure you understand everything i'm gonna check in on your homework just to see <laughs> make oh i'll uh, clean the brush uh they cover it for her oh good 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 but let me still TLC for that let me still demonstrate this to any um any watcher that watch this live and lag until the end but sometimes people getting out of the live too soon and they miss the end living their lives living their lives and they miss and on a, holiday a powerful too. secret so when i use my brush Okay, so this is a gel. I use it. I color. I paint. Blah blah blah, and then I transform it into another colors. Right? What I do is I wipe it like this. Okay, and, and then I just use another colors. Now, if I choose something like black, which are very potent. Okay, so if I use black, and then I want to transform to white. When I wipe it, it's not completely getting the color away and that, that might stain my white. So what I do is that I have acetone or alcohol, okay, to depend on your speed. Mixing in like that after I wipe it, okay. And then I put it in my white and I use it, right? But let's say I'm done with this client. I'm done for the day. I'm 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 done done. So what do I do? I take off the paper towel like this and I just wipe in my brush up okay and what happened is the gel that in my brush that I left it going to keep my brush nicely in shape you can break your brush and return it to the newest state that it has been before it's break just because it's nice and flexible the reason why I do this why I'm not just cleaning everything and then just leave it because if you do, your brush will be dry and brittle. Just like, just like when after you do a shampoo and then all dry, all just dry hair go to bed. When you wake up, you will pay for it because your hair gonna have split end. You don't want that. So after you do shampoo, you want to do some condition, right? And then after you do condition, after you rinse up, you want to put on some special oil on special overnight conditioning and you want to play with your hair a little bit before you go to bed so your hair can be nice and smooth just like your brush you have to have something on your brush now if you don't want to keep the gel in you can cleanse it and then just dip it in top coat it did the same thing and wipe it just like this and the top coat will keep your brush nicely shaped nice and sharp now instead of acetone or alcohol sometimes people also like to use top coat to clean so sometimes people paint like this right and they're afraid of acetone and alcohol because they don't know how to condition their brush they also cleaned it in top coat like this i don't do this because it takes forever and i'm a very fast-paced artist i have many many steps many layers i don't have time to sit there and keep doing this and clean it and doing this it takes like two seconds and i don't want to waste two seconds on it i only want one second you know what i mean so that a uh, few steps of cleaning the brush that you need to know and you need to remember all of it because 
the I say one way is not always gonna work for you. You have to know all of it just to say because your knowledge, your power. Just in case one someday this way is not work for you, you immediately know. Oh, I have two more way. I know how how to clean the brush this way and how to clean the brush that way. I'm perfect. I'm I'm powerful. So remember, you need to keep on adding to your knowledge. Any more? That was about it. Really? Okay. Make sure you make a beautiful blended pigment now for me. Oh, can we see the final look of the mirror gel top coated with shiny top coat? The mirror gel. The what? The mirror. Can we see the final look of mirror gel top coated with shiny top coat? Mm, the mirror gel, like you're talking about mirror liner. Kill this one. No more question. Can we see the final look of the nail? Jumping on to someone else's question. The top coat get rid of uh, mirror. Oh, the top coat get rid of mirror effect on gel liner. It did not. What happened is mirror gel liners is a type of gel that are reflective. The surface face reflect light and it make it nice and shine when you put on a top coat what happened is there is something in between now instead of seeing something chromey like this now it have a film over it so you put on one coat top coat the shine level will be about 10 percent less and when you put on a second layer of top coat, the shine level will be about 20% less. And it's not because it's getting rid of the shine. It's just that there's something in between. When there is something in between, you cannot, cannot see it as clearly as when there is something that have nothing on it, just like a peacock feathers. If you ever take a peacock feather and put liquid over it, you're not going to see anything because now the shine it's a little less, it's a little feel. So let me put it halfway for you to see. So this is a mirror chair with nothing on it. Right here. And this is the mirror chair with top coat on it. As you can see, it doesn't really interfere with the shine. It's just that it's slightly less easier to see the shine because there's something on it so when it comes to mirror liners you don't want a lot of top coat that's why i call it a quick fix a quick fix is when a person doesn't want to use a special effect gel like metal effect gel to put it on here and then rub chrome on then they can use a quick fix with mirror liner gel for mirror liner gel what i like to use it the most are in character painting when I do character painting, when I bump up to like something like this, like the clock that you see, or the crown, I don't want to put on special effect gels and then crumb it because I don't want to block anything. At that moment, if I want to do that, I have to put on the tap from that. I have to put on metal effect gel to draw the crown, crown, and then I have to wrap chrome on. I don't want to do that because I'm busy. I'm doing character painting. So at that moment, I take mirror liners. I apply one coat of mirror liner on, and then I put stained glass show overs just to make a different color effect. So that is a quick fix when it comes to chroming. Anything else? I don't see any more. WhatsApp, I will hear the, my IG. I don't get the notification. Okay, so that, that um, we have a WhatsApp group, and our WhatsApp group, when I'm on live, I get on WhatsApp and I alert everyone. Uh, in the beginning, it's a little complicated because everybody start talking. So people have to turn the notification up, but that doesn't serve really a purpose. You have to keep your notification on so you can see my alert. So now only moderator allowed to talk. So that is not a group where you go in and you socialize. It's, it's just a group that you join and then you just leave it alone. And whenever I'm on live, you get my notification. I will text. And can I have the uh, phone so I can show them the uh, QR code? I will show you the QR code. And you have to take a screenshot really quick because I'm only going to show about... Uh, 
10 seconds. But this is a, is a QR code to our WhatsApp group. So this is where you join and then you just leave it alone. And whenever I online, I will alert everyone. Can you use eyeshadow for nail ombre? What is the difference between pigment and press eyeshadow pigment? So when it comes to pigment, there's many type of pigment. There are pigment that you for soap, there's pigment that you for candle, there are cosmetic pigment, there's pigment that you for skin. So when it comes to eyeshadow, what happened is you don't know where it is. You don't know if it's a gray A pigment or just a you know a nobody pigment or you don't know if that pigment is cheap or expensive so when it comes to pigment work remember that i say you want to use an indian pigment you don't want to use a chinese pigment because that's a different level a chinese pigment is grainy it doesn't give you a good result and it's very hard to blend so when you eyeshadow it will stick onto pigment bay but now that is when we discuss what kind of pigment you're using because a flawless result depends on what kind of pigment you use. And your eyeshadow could come from a crappy pigment, but when you put it on your skin, it is so easy because your skin is porous. But when you put it on a flawless surface, like a nail surface, you need something that will give it smooth result. Let me see see any more question doesn't will be as a uh, premiere in san antonio on october 1st and 2nd yes if you live in texas this is uh, a beauty show that you want to attend because uh, this is the first of its kind in uh premiere that's orlando premiere but that's never in san antonio premiere so this is the first time they're doing it and if you're into technique, you will want to be there to see me demonstrate because I will demonstrate two day long from start to, to end. And there's a lot of different techniques and that even techniques that are beauty show exclusive that you never seen before. Can we see the nail? What nails? Probably the line, metal liner one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this side right here, it have no top coat and this side right here is have top coat you can see see that when there's something over it that when the light hit it when the light hit this it can reflect it because it's pure when the light hit this it's still reflective but there is something over it so it's interfere with the light fractures a little bit but it doesn't get rid of the sunshine it just make it a little harder for it to see. Any more question? They're gonna love you on Texas. Yes, every time I go to show, I'm, I'm getting excited because I love, love beauty show. I love to perform. I love to do live too, but on show I can actually see the people. You're welcome, you're welcome everyone. You're welcome. You're welcome. No more question, Jersey. Um, when I go to if I, if I go to Jersey, it will only be for a beauty show, because uh, back then I would travel for class, but now all my teaching is exclusive online, free for everyone. There is no subscription that are needed. You just click in and watch, and I save all my life so you can watch it at your own time. Um, if I have an in-person class later, it will be only in Missouri and it will be very expensive. Are you planning to visit London? If I visit London same way, it's only going to be for vacation. You're welcome, Nancy. Uh, the pigment base is currently sold out. Should be here soon, but we don't know exactly when. Yes, pigment base is already <laughs> uh, arrived to U.S. Um, area. Is, is in California right now on its way here. So it'll be very, very soon. As long as you get it, as long as it gets to US, I feel safe. Because if it's at sea, I have no idea when it's going to get here. But when it comes to US, it get here no time at all. I couldn't get close to you at, um, at Prime, uh, Orlando Premier. That's in what very nice while we were quizzing in. Yes, at the premiere, what happened is I surrounded by 30 to 50 people at a time, and it will be like that. It will be rotated like that.
from the day the show start to the moment the show end they'll be packed with people um we think a better alternative for that like right now i have a big tv and in san antonio i'm gonna boot it right behind me so people far away from me they still can see it and i'm working on a microphone so people can hear what i say because it's loud at show so we are looking for improvement at show because we want everybody to be able to see my technique orlando is only one an hour and 15 minute away from me that's true yeah so we working to improve that somebody has something about um Something about pigment. I missed it. Ask again. We, we missed it. Ask again. Anybody know the shipping cost to Germany? Uh, I don't know. I don't know because we connected with a UPS. We connected with FedEx. It's up to them. It's up to the shipping cost. And that is something you can easily find on Google. Yes, Lisa. When, um, I try my best to alert everyone about my beauty show. Uh, of course, I'm not really mm, a promotion type of person. So when I make like two or three different posts of my story, that's just it. I'm not gonna spend like every day just to say, tell people I'm gonna be in here, I'm gonna be here. So uh, when it comes to that, my story is important because story is when I post um, all the extras. But on my main page, I only post nails. I, I don't do like promotion or advertising or anything like that. I only post network. But on my story, like when I do all the extra. All, all three of us do hair both. Uh, has a shop in PA. Do you let shop carry your product? I don't let shop. Sell? No. I don't let shop or beauty supply carry my product to sell because my product until this day are still very exclusive on in the market because I don't just choose pre-existing ingredient. I hire chemists. I make my own ingredient. And um, because when I do art, I have different effects that I want to achieve. So I discuss it with them. So my product are custom made. And until this day, a lot of people want to steal my product, but they doesn't know the ingredient in it. So what happened is there's uh, in a few places will have Tinovo product, but the ing ingredient in the product will be incorrect because they just get whatever ingredient that they think is close, but it's not quite. And they will sell Tinovo product. And when people buy it, and they use it and it doesn't work they'd be like well uh well tino why this not work and i say well why you buy it and they say do you buy it from tino Vodak shop and they say no i saw this on alibaba or i saw this on amazon but if we can name on it and i say no we are the only seller so i the reason why i don't let shop or um beauty supply sell my product because as long as i am the only seller i can stand behind my product i can guarantee that what you get is a real deal but if you get it from anywhere else anything can happen i can guarantee that that is why we remain exclusive in the market right that's in what, what were you saying that was it exactly anything else nope. yes i i um, try my very best to keep my product uh, protect and that is the only way I know how to protect it is that there is only one place in the whole world that you can buy my product is at tinovo.shop I will not distribute it to anywhere else just to keep the integrity of the products because anything fishy can happen Okay, I'm out of here then. <laughs> Do your homeworks. Okay, so uh, can I borrow the phone? Uh, yes, the new polish is back in stocks. Hallelujah, and get it while it's last. <laughs> we have waiting on it for two months. Okay, now, uh, after the show, I will say my live on here. So these are highlights, these call highlights. And these highlight 
uh, the big show that I have on my big page. Okay, I will save it on here. How you asset it is you click on it and you have to like click into a video like this and, and you will see watch video. And when you see watch video, you click on watch video to watch it. Okay, so that is it's a little tricky, but that's the best what we can do for you to pinpoint technique. So all of my highlight gonna be in there. So today, pigment highlight will be on there. And it's that? Yes, all three nude colors on the website now. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, we are done. I'm out of here. All right, everyone. Um, I need a minute to take pictures. Mm. And I will um, go ahead and post this live right after. And then I will uh, put on my story and save it on my highlight. Uh, your homework is already included in the score brushstroke. You have to um, practice your brushstroke. Uh, if you don't, if you forgot your homework, you rewatch the live again. It will be saved right away, right after this, uh, in about a minute. A minute, I will save it. You're welcome. So remember that this live is very, very important. Um, if you master this technique, you are one step into advancement. And remember that until this day, a lot of master artists are still trying to perfect this pigment. So if you fasten up, you can catch them. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. And tomorrow is our normal live. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we still have the total shell to do. And we still have this to do with liquid chrome. And uh, 3D jelly, we already finished these. Okay. So that is tomorrow live, and I will see you tomorrow on the small page on Tina Boda Shop. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you for joining me today.